Hi, Rucha. How are you? Hello, Himang. Good evening. And nice to meet you. Yeah, good evening. Uh, first of all, a big congratulations to you for completing your third WGM norm in the Abu Dhabi Masters. Basically, in a very strong field, uh, you scored 4.5 out of 9, now uh, 50% performance, which is very good. And mm -hmm. this was your final WGM norm, right? Yes, yes, that's true. I completed my final norm after a long time. And I still need to get my rating to 2300. So I want to wait till I celebrate <laughs> still. Yeah. So yeah, that's true. That's true. But uh, like we can say that one part of the journey is complete and another part remains, of course. Yes. Uh, yeah, it was a long um, time to reach here. And also I have been working a lot. And um, because of COVID and all these things, I had to take a break for, you know, two years. And uh, the wait became a bit longer. But during these two years, I also... Um, did a lot of things i also started streaming and uh, training and working on chess every day so that helped me a lot uh, with my games and uh, with my recent performance as well right so i think your twitch career basically or your streaming that i think started back in the lockdown like in the early days yes. of the lockdown yes yes i think now it's almost two years mm -hmm. uh, i can say i started in october 2020 and uh, I have been streaming very consistently and uh, exclusively on Twitch. And it's nice to build a very um, great community. And uh, throughout this journey, I met a lot of uh, great people who who uh, want to see me stream, who are there, who join uh, consistently. And it's a great thing to share this love for chess with um, people who also feel the same way. Absolutely. So. I have saw some of your Twitch videos and the streams which you have done. Like, mm -hmm. for example, I think uh, Grandmaster Badur Jobawa once came to your stream, if I'm, mis if, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, a lot of top players, I think, started streaming uh, after the lockdown. And mm -hmm. maybe some of them were not able to continue due to certain prospects. But you have kept it going and you are still streaming with full force, right? Yes, yes. Um, on my stream, we have we have had many, many events. I also organized many tournaments um, for my community. And uh, I had collaborations with many strong players. It's nice to uh, collaborate with strong players to get to know them, to learn from them. And uh, my streams are a lot instructive. So I like to also have training streams and uh, people like that, that uh, we can also have a good, you know, um, vibes going on and also learn in the process. So I like to keep my streams instructive and also a lot of other activities are we are having there. Right. So, yeah, of course, it's a very wholesome stream and also people get to learn a lot. If I'm not mistaken, right now, uh, the follow account in your Twitch stream has already reached 9K. And uh, you were the first woman gesture from India to become a Twitch partner. So how was that feeling? Yes, it was amazing feeling. Um, I started in lockdown and uh, I did not know that I will go this far. But uh, the main uh, idea was that I want to, um, you know, I love chess. So I want to be connected to chess in every other way. And it started small, but slowly it uh, grew, the community grew. And I also enjoyed um, doing this from the very beginning. It was not easy in the beginning. There were a lot of things to learn, to understand, to know. But uh, now I'm very happy with where I stand with streaming. And uh, yeah, it's it's going great. Right, absolutely. It has been a fantastic journey for you. And apart from that, uh, you have ventured into several different fields apart from playing. Uh, that mm -hmm. is, uh, writing-wise, you have also done some work. Then mm -hmm. there was your own academy. Uh, can you like share a bit more details about that? Yes, sure. So currently I'm doing a lot of things right now. So uh, streaming is just one part um, of what I'm doing right now. I'm also a chess trainer. I'm working with uh, many students online and uh, I'm happy with um, their progress, their growth. And uh, I'm also working on myself every day. So I'm completely dedicated to chess and in one way or another, um, be connected with chess and um, since I'm very passionate about it, 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 it makes me very happy that my work um, revolves around chess in every way. 
so that is of course a dream to so many people that uh, they want to work in something which they're passionate about uh, mm -hmm. sometimes it happens sometimes it doesn't happen but uh, mm -hmm. you could say that you are one of those lucky individuals who have found their passion and they work something in which they really love yes yes um i'm very lucky to have found chess from a very um, young age and also i would like to thank my parents my family my brother so my brother taught me chess in the very beginning and uh, my family has been supporting me since um, when I started. I started when I was six years old and they have been with me through this journey. And uh, I would like to complete uh, my WGM title soon and dedicate it to my family, of course. Right. So uh, basically your brother was the one who started teaching you chess at the age of six years old, as you mentioned. Like, mm -hmm. when did you realize or what age did you realize that, okay, this is something I can maybe pursue a career in, or maybe it is just something that I love really? Uh, what was that time? So in the beginning, my brother Akshay, he's three years older to me. Okay. He was the one who um, taught me chess. And um, we used to play a lot. And um, then I joined some uh chess training in, in here locally and i picked up the game pretty quickly and um, i started at age six and at age seven i was the national champion i won my first nationals and uh, yeah. i also got qualified for asian and volume championships and uh from the very beginning i um i played well so it i was very happy and it pushed me to keep playing and since then every year I have been playing this circuit you know like nationals Asians commonwealth mm -hmm. world uh, and uh, yeah it's been a long journey and it has been a very successful one for you you have a long list of accomplishments uh, as a player mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, but it, it's not like a one specific moment where I decided that I want this to be my career so from the beginning I started playing and uh, it's like I never look back it um it just kept rolling and uh yeah it's it's like um i played a tournament which tournament to play next i just kept okay. planning after that so the flow of playing was always very natural to you and you were also pursuing your studies uh, till some point are you also studying right now or doing something um currently i'm not studying i i have a master's degree in literature Okay. So uh, I have completed my master's degree and I also enjoyed that. And I believe that education is also very important. And um, when I've been studying, I also um, invested a lot of time in that. And I, um, when I graduated my bachelor's degree, master's degree, I was in like one of the top students in the university also. And yeah, both are important. Why not? Right. So, like, how hard was it for you, or for that matter, for any chess player, do you think, mm -hmm. to manage your studies and, let's say, your chess career? Because this is, uh, like, a full-time thing. You have to prepare for tournaments, you have to take proper mm -hmm. coaching, do opening preparation, and you have to also prepare for your exams or and whatever your courses. So, how hard was that for you? Yes, um, in the from the beginning, it's difficult. Like, since I said I played from age six, so I used to miss school for you know more than six months in a year okay. and I have to catch up but also I was very sincere throughout uh, my school my college always used to complete all the projects assignments and work wow. and um, I think chess also has a big influence because um, it teaches a lot of things like to focus uh, when you're studying to have that dedication and uh, I believe it is possible to pursue both of these things equally at the same time and also do well in both that's that these are very inspiring words and i hope that uh, the young chess players who are watching this they will also take this lesson to heed and of course you can have a career in chess you can also do your education properly because that is that was something important to you and that you also mm -hmm. think that it is important to a lot of other chess players right Yes, yes. Uh, I believe that we have a lot of potential in us. We just have to, you know, push ourselves. And uh, yeah, it is definitely possible. Not just me, but there are also many other chess players um, mm. who will, uh, you know, say the same about right. managing and balancing both. Absolutely. So we had also Vantik Agarwal uh, on our stream a few days back. And she also was saying the same thing that 
education is also important to her while chess of course uh, while it takes like the front seat i would say but mm-hmm. education is also very important to her and even before the olympiad she mentioned that she was uh, preparing for her exams and mm-hmm. uh, that turned out quite well for her so uh, definitely yes, uh, the education part and the chess part can be managed coming yes. back to your uh, stint on the abu dhabi masters so like mm-hmm. when a tournament goes well for you like do you think there's something which you feel like during the tournament or let's say before the tournament do you feel more confident or uh, like is there any separate feeling uh, well yes in chess i can say that confidence is a big thing uh, when mm-hmm. when you approach a game when you go for a game and that can be only built with training i believe so um when i went to the tournament i was feeling pretty confident because for for last few years i have been working on chess every day and uh, it's about doing all the right things and uh, when you keep following uh, discipline you also feel uh, good about yourself and yeah i have been working many hours every day on chess um on all parts of the game working on opening working on my end game and in general becoming a better player also you know working out at gym every right. day and um, having more energy for the games so mm-hmm. i can say that that together gave me a confidence um to approach the games and uh, i was ready to fight that's it so when i go, go when i went for the game i was just ready to fight no matter how long the game goes or how tough the opponent is right so that sort of attitude that that's sort of, a that sort of attitude is what helped you to like score so well in the tournament and to play good chess in general before mm-hmm. abu dhabi masters what was the last tournament that you played um after covid um after two years my first tournament i went to serbia okay. and um i played two tournaments there mm-hmm. and uh, for me they were not that great maybe because i was playing after a long time mm-hmm. i just needed to warm up a bit and uh, yeah after that i was ready when i played in this tournament right that would have been masters and it turned out to be a great tournament for you so if i could uh, share my screen once i would like to look mm-hmm. at your round 2 game against i am dushyant sharma okay sure let's right. do that mm-hmm. so uh, can you see the chess board in your screen yeah i can see that's great so like uh, tell us a bit about your thoughts before the game and how did you prepare for this game exam okay so um this tournament was actually a very tough tournament um uh-huh. it's about 2100 2200 about 2100 i think and yeah. uh, i knew that every um game i will go i will face against a tougher opposition so it's also important to prepare for every game and uh, have a good um position out of the opening and comfortable position and yeah this game i prepared a specific line and uh, i got that line in the game and i was very happy with how it turned out so um yeah i prepared this specific line so starting with d4 this okay, queen so a4 d4. check mm-hmm. line yes d4 d5 c4 e6 knight f3 knight f6 knight c3 we should be four it should be four and queen a4 queen a4 check Knight c6, and um, in the past I had been playing e3 okay. line, and uh, I knew that my opponent would prepare for this e3 setup. And mm-hmm. after the game, I spoke with my opponent, and he also said the same to me that I spent a lot of time preparing against e3, and mm-hmm. uh, e3 was a bit unexpected move. Okay, but still we are in the main position here, so it's not like complete new position. So a3 right. bishop c3 is normal. takes b7 b7 and mm-hmm. here interesting idea first cd5 now there are no discovered attack mm-hmm. so cool. ed5 and bishop and... g5 so okay. this is a really sharp game because mm-hmm. uh, even if i get active bishop uh, it allows at 6 g5 which was actually the best response and uh, my opponent did find it on the board it's and six. this leads to very sharp game yeah at 6 and followed by g5 here and the idea is to go for knight e4 later and activate the knight so in this position uh, dushyant played uh, rook b8 
Yes, I was also surprised a mm -hmm. bit about this move, Rook B8. It mm -hmm. seems a bit unnatural. But mm -hmm. the whole idea here is that Black wants to play Knight E4. Mm -hmm. But uh, now, one move back, he still can't play because I have the idea of Queen B3. So if Knight so, E4... Uh, what happens if... Uh, if Knight E4? Knight E4 here. So uh, the idea is of Queen B3 here. Okay. So, so White can go Queen B3. And uh, B3. I'm attacking both D5 and B7. So that's why I want, wanted to protect the b7 pawn with uh, rook b8 first, and then only uh, he can play the move knight e4, right? Yes, that is correct. So mm -hmm. he wanted to go for rook b8, and next idea is to go for knight e4. Right. Uh, here you played the move queen c2. So mm -hmm. you're coming back with the queen, and what was the idea behind this move? So now I want to get the queen out of that discovered attack. And uh, next, I want to challenge the center slowly. So my next idea would be to go e3, c4, or bishop d3, and uh, try to play on the light squares. Oh, I see. So in this position also, it seems that uh, black's king side is a bit weak, actually. Uh, he has pushed the pawns with h6 and g5. Mm -hmm. So here you played, here he played knight e4, which was... Yeah, knight e4 is fine. This is yeah. one of the main ideas for black. To get the knight to e4 and uh, have a good center. Right. So is this till this point? Is this still your preparation? Or... Yes. Yes. Uh, I had okay. seen this idea before, okay. and uh, okay. even if not the specific moves. So in in preparation, we can't cover all the moves. But mm -hmm. it's important to understand the ideas, and uh, if we know the general ideas, how to uh, complete your development. You know, in general, which side to castle, which side to take breaks. That can be very useful. Right. So. Here he played. Here you played e3. E3, uh, yeah. And he went h5. Okay. So mm -hmm. he wants to play h4, trapping your bishop. Uh, and here you played bishop b3. Yes, so, already the game has becoming the game is becoming very sharp, and uh, I'm allowing h4, but mm -hmm. currently it's not that great because I take on e4 first, mm -hmm. and uh, followed with queen e4 check. Absolutely, and I think. Uh, that will just launch a devastating attack on black. The main problem with the black position, from what it seems to me, is that black is not castling in this position. And uh, mm -hmm. the king side is too weak. The black pieces are also not developed too well. For example, this rook on b8 is not doing very much. Yes, that's so, correct. So I had mm -hmm. seen a uh, same a lot of games in this position, but in most of the games, Black had already castled instead of rook b8 and uh, had an additional option of going rook e8 and defending right. on e4. Right. So here your opponent played Dushan played bishop f5. And mm -hmm. Now you went h4. Yeah, h4 was necessary now to mm -hmm. stop Black's h4. Absolutely. You have to save your bishop. So, and mm -hmm. here you play g4. Yes, and, and this is actually a very interesting position. Mm -hmm. And uh, during the game, uh, I remembered a very nice game which I had seen in my preparation. And I was looking for a nice move, which was bishop f4, which was um, played in one of the games. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that to preserve the bishop, bishop f4 here, Mm -hmm. And uh, we save the dark square bishop and the black, mm -hmm. even if he takes on f3, we take with the pawn and the knight is pinned on e4. So, so well, this seems like a very nice idea, but is it working in this position exactly? Bishop f4? Uh, this idea is good, but it's more um, efficient if black has castled on king side. Okay. So, right now the king is still in the center, so opening of the g file may not be yes. as may not be the same. Effect. Right. So, for example, if let's say the black king was let's say on uh, g8, then of course the rook g1 check coming. Yes. So, yeah. same idea will be very strong if black has already castled, mm -hmm. and uh, we can easily launch an attack from the g file. Go rook g1, maybe even move the king, king e2, and try to double and so on. Right. But uh, since the king still stands in the center, this um, idea, I thought that, okay, let's not go for this and okay. went for knight d2 in the game. In the game, you played knight d2. 
Yeah, after the idea is uh, sort of to open the center, right? Break open the center. Yes, after the game analyzed this game, of course, and um, um, knight g five is much stronger in this position okay. instead of knight d two. Knight g five. Yeah, this would have been more stronger move. Right. So uh, knight g five, of course, he can take with the knight because the bishop will be handy. Mm -hmm. So, like, how would play continue for white in this position? So uh, the same idea which I was going for in the game, and okay. uh, the difference is knight is more active here on g five. Right. So it's of course uh, that's a hit in this f seven pawn, which might be important in some variations. Yeah. So black can go for knight g three as played in the game, and um, f g three, and uh, yeah, knight is more active. Right. So here just knight g three f g three. Basically, and, you get yeah. sort of the same position, but the knight is maybe a bit more active on g four. Yes. Okay. During the game, I thought of this move, um, and I thought maybe black can get f six somewhere, but not okay, here. <laughs> not here. Yeah, yeah, maybe but uh, in some like positions, this. black can get f six. But okay, um, white gets away with it. Mm -hmm. So in the game, what happened is you played knight d two, and your opponent did. Mm -hmm. Take on g3, knight g3. Yeah, f g3. And we have traded pieces. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was already happy with the outcome from the opening here. And there are double pawns, but white has more control of the center. And uh, I will easily get attack on e and f file soon. Right. And of course, uh, another important factor is black is like the blacking is still not castle. It is that is a big center. question here that. Um, where will the black king go if the king goes to king side again still it's not safe i can right. easily attack h5 g4 let's say mm -hmm. queen f5 and um, create attack on the king side the king can't stay in the center for long and now you see that this move rook b8 which was played earlier can be a big disadvantage because with rook on a8 black could still consider option of long castling and running away from the center quickly absolutely so like uh... If, for example, black had not played rook b8, the queen side seems like sort of a safe space for the black king. Whereas yes, I would believe that still white has um, some advantage, but mm -hmm. uh, it won't be as big as in the game. Right. So, okay, what happened after queen d3 is black played queen d6. Yes, the... now e4, right in e6. time, right on time. So g3 is defended, and mm -hmm. I want to get my knight active to e4. Absolutely. And uh, the center is just breaking open, and the black king will face an attack. So mm -hmm. here, Dushan third king, d7. Yes, Maybe so he black is sure, trying. Like, uh, he was trying to escape with the king, perhaps, in this position. Yes, so I have to act fast in this position. If mm -hmm. black is able to move the rook, go to king c8, then he would manually castle on the queen side and yes. uh, the king will be safe. So mm -hmm. we got to act fast now. Right. So castled in the position. First of all, yeah. taking now tempo F7. on that seven pawn. Mm -hmm. okay. So he played rook b8. He has to save the pawn. Yes. And from here, it's, it's a nice sequence of moves and also important to understand how to um, create attack in positions like this. e5 looks very tempting. Mm -hmm. But uh, I believe that ED5 is much stronger. Open the center and uh, quickly generate attack. E5 also looks very tempting, but mm -hmm. it closes the position here. Right. Uh, much better is ED5, which you played in the game. Uh, mm -hmm. queen D5. Now you take another tempo on the queen with rook F5. Yes, yeah, so rook F5. Now queen mm -hmm. is under attack. Queen moves. Mm -hmm. Now knight get acti activated. Right. So, so a lot of the queen here. is getting uh, attacked repeatedly, and also all of your pieces are uh, like moving into the attack very fast. Mm -hmm. So now queen goes to g6, queen and g6. here there are many ways to continue. And I believe there are also some ideas to win material. For example, rook g5. I was thinking during the game, rook g5, and after queen at six or queen at seven. Um, rook h5 is possible idea and knight f6 is a fork if you take oh, it yeah. that's a very nice so, idea oh, that's a pretty idea yeah so in this case I can win a pawn 
black will not take black will move the queen but mm -hmm. i this position it's like instead of going for a pawn or two i thought okay let's go after the king and mm -hmm. it can be even more dangerous right so, so in after uh, thinking i went for rook f6 and black has not much to do here the position is blocked and uh, here your opponent played queen g7 and now just uh, knight c5 check knight c5 check king c8 queen f5 queen check five. and yeah knight d7 is also winning but a pretty finish is rook c6 yeah that's a nice way to end it so this is exciting. and now queen b1 and there follows a mate mate is also nice actually king c8 so queen b7 check, king d8, queen b8 check, king e7. All four mm -hmm. knights. Queen c7. Queen c7. And uh, I guess and with this move is possible. Yeah, queen d6 check. King f5 um, and rook f1. This just finishes the game. So the black king basically takes a walk. All throughout <laughs> the board, first going to the queen mm -hmm. side, then again coming back to the center, and this gets. Yeah, I was actually very happy about this game because, uh, yeah, it's not every day that you get a, such a nice game, mm -hmm. you know, with a player who is like two hundred points higher. Right, absolutely. Dushyant, of course, also a very strong player. He's the first international master from Punjab, so mm -hmm. very strong young player. But in this game, basically, yeah, you. From right from the opening, you you got an initiative and you like never left it. You just always kept that initiative. Too. Yeah. So here I was happy that my prep came to handy and I got a position which I had prepared for, and then it became very comfortable to play. Cool. So I guess he was not uh, very familiar with this line. And, mm -hmm. uh, rook B8 was sort of going into the wrong direction. Yes, yes. And I think even after, instead of queen d6, um, later, after a lot of trades, queen, queen f6 d6. was a bit stronger. Yeah, queen yes. f6 was a bit stronger here mm -hmm. to uh, delay my castling mm -hmm. on the king side. And, um, okay, white will go e4. But, yes, slightly better than d6, I believe. Yeah, at least uh, you are not getting to castle right away. Maybe you can play rook f1 also at some point. Is that a valid idea? Yeah, rook f1 is possible, yeah. Mm -hmm. But then my king is also in the center. Right. So not so, as same as before. Yeah, I don't know here, is... maybe queen g6. I don't know. In this position? After e4? Yeah, after e4, I think so. Queen g6. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, then try for short castle. In this position, or we can keep the yeah, castling, it's fine. Okay, still better for white, but yeah, maybe um, better than I don't the like game. queen d6. Maybe yeah. queen not rushing with queen d6, keep the queen on f6 for some time, and right. So, yeah, this was a very nice game from you, basically. And uh, I would also like to look at another game which I like very much. That I think mm -hmm. uh, was with the black pieces against uh, Olav Ivan Ristin. This was an opponent from Norway. Uh, like mm -hmm. I believe he's an international master. Um, I think FIDE master. Okay, FIDE master. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he's 23-25 uh, rated. And yeah, mm -hmm. this game and this was... was one of the most interesting games I played um, in this tournament. And a lot was happening also in this game. And yeah. Uh, okay, so let's uh, go through the game. It started with d4, d5, mm -hmm. c4, e6. Nine, so six, yeah, seven. I had prepared also for this game, and I was mm -hmm. predicting that we might go into this Carlsford structure, which is mm -hmm. c capture d5. Okay, so and six, yes, he did c go for the line. Mm -hmm. We should g5, and c6. c6. Queen c2. And uh, here I had to change. So in the same tournament, in one of my previous games against Eric Rosen, mm -hmm. I had the same position. And that time I used another line with knight d7, bishop e7, 
and so on. The normal theory, bishop e7, knight e7. And then, yeah, that also interesting game, which ended in a draw in the end. But this time I decided to change line and uh, go for another idea, which is bishop d6. And a different um, way to play completely than right. 97. Yeah, right. So, for example, if you had played the same line, maybe your opponent uh, would have been a bit more prepared. Of course, mm -hmm. he has saw. Of course, he would have seen your game against Eric, and he would have mm -hmm. prepared accordingly for that line. Okay. So here he played e3, and then you castle. Mm -hmm. Bishop d3, h6, bishop h4, rook e8, knight g8, and a5, pushing on the queen side. Yes, yeah, so your idea is that with a5, I want mm -hmm. to play knight a6. Right. So okay. before, one move before, it is a bit awkward because it gives a chance for white to take on a6 and mm -hmm. ruin the pawn structure. Mm -hmm. But once we, if I go here directly knight a6, mm -hmm. then white has option to take on a6. And now you see that the pawns are not that great. Yeah, like, the queen side pawn structure is somehow a bit mangled up. So that was so a5 that... is a very normal move. And the idea is that I want to get some space on the queen side and also prepare knight a6. And now right. if bishop takes, I can take with the rook and mm -hmm. no problems here. Yeah. Uh, in that case, I think uh, like what happened in the game, match 3 knight a6. Yeah, here this I also guess... actually sets an opening trap, you know, a5. If you go back one move, um, okay. instead yeah, of yeah. h3. Mm -hmm. If you are very quick in playing and if you um, forget, let's say, castling is an opening trap. Mm -hmm. So if you white plays short castling, then there is bishop h2 idea. Okay. And mm -hmm. after king h2, knight g4 check, the Greek gift king g3, uh, yeah. and the g5 here. And black has a big advantage. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay, wow, this trap just came from nowhere. Wow. So if you just castle here, then there's bishop h2. And yeah, it's nice to know this trap. And a Greek, it is called as Greek gift and very mm -hmm. common sacrifice to watch out for. Right. Yeah, so the white king is just brutally hunted down like to the, towards the center of the board and yeah, g5. Then. And black wins the material black and this is of course a big advantage. Absolutely. Or black. The king is, like the king is completely unsafe here and Probably there is a mating attack coming very soon. Yes. But okay, when you are playing strong tournament, you are not going to get these things. Yeah. So White, of course, played H3. And uh, stopping... White was probably already aware of these kind of... Uh, <laughs> yes, caps. yes, H3. So no more uh, Bishop H2 ideas. So okay. Knight A6. Now threat yeah. is to go Knight B4. Mm -hmm. And uh, trade that. for the Bishop. This Bishop on D3 is supposed to be the strong minor piece for white. So if mm -hmm. I will be able to get it for the knight, I would be happy here. Absolutely. Because yeah, this bishop somehow doesn't seem to have too great of a future. Uh, of mm -hmm. course, it is spinning the knight at the moment, but maybe not for long. So yeah, light square yes. bishop, I would say, is the best piece for white. Stop it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, just a3 to stop it. And knight knight c7. seven. Presses. Knight e6 and a nice maneuver for the knight, gaining some tempos, right. and um, now on a good square on e6. It controls a lot of squares while we gain on e6. So maybe c5 at some point could be an idea. Yeah, c5 can be an idea as long as we defend d5. Okay. But uh, what I'm looking forward in this position is to get b5. Okay. And um, try to expand on the queen side. B5, maybe B4 later. Let's see. Yeah, it's sort of you get, uh, and basically you get your pawns rolling in the queen side. Mm -hmm. So uh, here he played F3. And uh, I guess he wants to go some G4 at some point. Also he's stopping Knight E4. Yes. And uh, in this setup, in this Kalsper system with Knight E2, uh, the main idea for White is to try to play F3 and E4. Okay. If he's able to achieve that, f3 and e4, then white can get a very strong center. Okay. And after e4, black's position is 
you know, a bit shaky. You have to be very careful because there are always threats of E5 and um, there can be a pawn storm coming up. So have to delay E4 as much as possible. Right. So yeah, the central pawn majority just starts rolling after that. Time. So mm -hmm. you, want, you don't want that. And how you play bishop E7? Yes, actually this, um, I have to say, is a novelty. So mm -hmm. this is a new move. I think um, knight g5 is played before in in these kind of positions. Knight g5 is played before. Mm -hmm. And the idea is to provoke um, f4, I think, f4 and knight e6. But I thought that let's try something. So mm -hmm. um, I found this very nice idea when I was Bishop preparing e7. Bishop e7. And I think this is a novelty okay. and happy to play. And uh, yeah, now there is no more pin anymore. Mm -hmm. And also the idea is that I'm also opening the queen. Mm -hmm. So if white goes for e4 right now, mm -hmm. it's not possible because I will take it and d4 is hanging in the end. Right. So you just uh, move the bishop sort of out of the way so that you can, uh, when white plays the move e4, you can always attack the pawn on d4. Yeah, so my whole idea with this is to delay e4 as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And that is white's major idea in this. So after bishop e7, I guess this is completely new for your opponent. So here you played uh, rook d1. Yeah, rook d1, normal move. Once mm -hmm. again, white wants to prepare e4. Mm -hmm. So indirectly supporting d4 here. Right. And now you went for your idea, your original idea of expanding in the queen side, b5. Yes, b5. And now once again, e4 is um, not so easy to achieve because d4 is hanging. And not only that, now I have an additional idea to go b4. So after b5, he played uh, bishop f2. Mm -hmm. And he is, I guess, trying to sort of increase protection on the d4 point. Yes, still one still going for e4 idea mm -hmm. so yeah in this uh, sort of uh, battle going on for a long time that white wants to play uh, e4 and you want mm -hmm. to expand on the queen side yes yes so here you played knight h5 and uh, okay so knight h5 idea is that once again now i cannot stop e4 anymore mm -hmm. so once white goes e4 now i will get the f4 square right so for yeah you have to come up with new ideas e4 Till one point was stoppable. Now, now that it's not stoppable, now you have the idea of coming with your knight. Yeah, knight f4. So g4, very normal move. Mm -hmm. Because white still wants to get this idea, push mm -hmm. the knight and try e4 in the end. Uh, here you played a nice move. Whoa, uh, bishop d6. Yeah, I was happy to play this move. And uh, again, this was also part of my preparation when I was okay. preparing for the game. So this move is not easy to find on the board. I agree. Mm -hmm. And uh, since I knew this idea, I could play it. And uh, yeah, um, in this game, my preparation was very long, I think, uh, for 20 moves, I believe. Yeah, right, right now it's move 17 and you're still in your preparation. So that, yeah, you, you, you basically you did some excellent preparation, I would say. Yes, yes. So right. um still so in what's the idea if uh, we just take gh5. So take uh the idea is to go queen g5 check. King, king h1. Mm -hmm. Queen takes h5. So yeah, I won't say it's uh, like winning advantage, but black has a lot of compensation for the material. So next time attacking on h3 and f3. Mm -hmm. And this position is very difficult to can be very difficult to, to play for white. Yeah, it seems yeah. very practically difficult because uh, how exactly do you like try to defend the H3 pen from them? So for positions example. like this, I can say that um, if you have analyzed them before, then you can easily defend. But if it's completely new on the board right now, it can become very difficult, especially when I have I, I have analyzed it, but my opponent hasn't. So I will have an edge in position like this. And next, I'm also looking for moves like knight g5, increasing pressure on the king side on h3 and f3. The bishop will open up. So the bishop will also take on h3. Mm -hmm. And yeah, very tough position to play practically. Okay. Reasonably, I would say 
with evaluation this is still equal with correct defense but it's a practical decision yeah finding the correct defense over the board of course is not a simple task yes and already i had around 30 minute advantage on the clock because mm-hmm. of this mm-hmm. and i was happy that i have extra time on the clock and i can utilize it later right so in this position he didn't go for gs5 but he played the move in g2 in g2 yeah and now gh5 is the threat so mm-hmm. now the idea is that white wants to play gh5 and mm-hmm. it's not as strong anymore because after queen g5 check now white can block the check right with knight g3 or bishop g3 and now the same idea is not strong as strong as before so now yeah. you came back with uh, knight f6 yes but i have achieved a small <laughs> achievement is that the king is on g2 mm-hmm. and i got an extra move with bishop d6 so it's like um very small edge i can say right also i think it would have had some sort of a psychological uh, pressure on your opponent as well who was already under time pressure and when you played a move like uh, let's say knight h uh, like bishop d6 yeah, bishop in the position d6. yes right. also so, i gained time mm-hmm. my opponent took time over the board and yeah, yeah it's still equal position but i feel uh, more confident in playing a position which i have seen before absolutely so here you continued knight g3 and mm-hmm. you now you went for h5 yeah actually h5 was my first move um over the board which i played uh out of the theory out of my prep mm-hmm. and yeah it's funny that that was a like a dubious move first move i played yeah. but yeah, the was... idea is that i want um to stop white from playing f4 and just mm-hmm. pushing all the pawns right so h5 uh like just breaking in the king side in general and uh, and stopping yeah. f4 white f4 stopping f4 of course yes this is also an important point uh let's mm-hmm. say if uh, white just takes gh5 okay so now i can think of moves like knight g5 mm-hmm. and in general i'm happy with the structure actually that happened in the game later why okay. did take on h5 few yeah. moves later yeah but he waited for a few moves i think first he played uh, knight c mm-hmm. right and then you played bishop d7 developing the last piece i guess and yeah c6 was hanging so defended c6 yeah, and this c6 time also. i decided to go to d7 because mm-hmm. now your idea comes to mind c5 which you had suggested earlier right so yeah, now uh, can press c5. so it's not the same if i go to b7 if i play bishop b7 then c5 the b5 pawn is still hanging ah right that's the point but when you are on d7 this this pawn is defended yes now i want to go for c5 and um, try to break in the center right so in the game what happened is okay now he takes g5 mm mm-hmm. that's why when now you play rook c8 so it's like a positional sacrifice it's not like i have um anything directly but mm-hmm. yeah i'm stopping white from uh from the pawn storm right. for some time yeah uh, f4 is not coming very easily right now and also uh, the king side pawn structure of white is somewhat ruined i would say so double mm-hmm. pawns in h5 so here he played queen d2 and okay you played queen c7 yeah waiting mm-hmm. and uh, rook c1 he wants to i guess stop you from pushing c5 yes and, and some small traps like bishop b5 winning a pawn ah yes so that is also a bishop b5 is an idea mm-hmm. so here you played d4 yes and uh, a b4 bishop b4 mm-hmm. queen d1 already it seems to me that the queen is not maybe the best placed piece in the white camp yes so now it. i want to take c5 pawn break so first i move the queen get out of the pin and queen b7 so okay this is a very unclear position i would say uh, white has an extra pawn and both have equal chances here right. white can also generate attack on the king side mm-hmm. maybe at 6 at a good time can be an idea right. uh, because the yeah, other double pawn somehow is not like giving him to like some big advantage right now maybe he mm-hmm. can give it up later to sort of uh, generate an attack on the king side yes okay so here he played h4 
H4 idea is to stop knight g5. Okay. So that can be a bit annoying if mm -hmm. black is able to go knight g5 and uh, create bishop h3 threat. Right. So here we get c5. Finally, c5 is executed. <laughs> yes, you right. won. You um, suggested this idea in the opening, and here we right. are. Right, exactly. So uh, he played dc5, uh, bishop c5. Mm -hmm. and uh, b3 yeah so um i think i was successful with the opening because the whole idea is to delay e4 and uh, e4 was very difficult to achieve throughout the game for white and yeah uh, mm -hmm. i would say it was very successful because white still hasn't played e4 so yes, yes. Uh, basically it played into a preparation and at this point was, was your opponent like uh, low on time uh yeah i had i think 30 minutes extra on the clock. Mm -hmm. But yeah, now we are already in a new position. So I was also taking time here. Right. So queen b6. Uh, a time advantage can be useful because the mm -hmm. format in this tournament was 90 minutes plus 30 seconds, but no mm -hmm. additional time after 40 moves. Okay. So, so yeah, it's then, one time control. Yeah. If there was, let's say, additional time after 40 moves, then story would have been different. Mm -hmm. But in this, like, of course, in this uh, time format, time management is very important. Yes. And now so it is six. And now it's six. six. And from here, the game gets very interesting. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think we both had chances from here. And mm -hmm. now the time situation is getting low for both of us. So it's not like we can spend a lot of time. We right. have to make faster decisions and very critical decisions as well. Right. So, of course, the position seems uh, like risky for both sides, I would say. Also, white has an attack on the king side. Mm -hmm. You are also, uh, your pieces are very actively positioned. So, here you played g6. Yeah. And you went h5. h5 and takes. h5. And h5. after all the trades, it's like um, not sure whose king is safer. Right. Yeah, both the kings seem somehow a bit weak. Mm -hmm. uh, here he played the bishop b1. Bishop yeah, b1, bishop. I guess the idea is he wants to come to d3 with this queen. Yes, queen d3 is a very strong idea. So mm -hmm. that is one. And another is queen d5. Right. Also a nice idea. Yeah. Queen d5, of course. Uh, he will just take this one. That's also an idea. So here, you played... so here bishop b5. And b5. Um, now b5. I'm creating a trap after bishop b5. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that I want to play bishop takes e2. Mm -hmm. I want to uh, take after queen takes e2. A nice okay. knight fork, knight f4 check. Uh, okay. well, that's and the so pawn is gained. Right. So bishop b5, that was an idea. And mm -hmm. uh, okay, I analyzed this game later. Mm -hmm. And white had a very nice way to exploit this position. Mm -hmm. And he had a way to actually get a winning advantage. So oh. very difficult move to find during the game. But uh, the main idea here would be rook g1. Okay, rook g1. So yeah, just uh, and, ignoring um, any pawns to take on the center. Just and this is a very team. nice idea because now yeah. after bishop e2, queen capture e2. Mm, bishop e2, queen, queen e2. capture e2, knight f4 check. And now white just moves his king and it's check on you. Oh, okay, okay. So that's the so main idea of King H1, thing. let's say. Right. So a check is met with another check. Yeah, and um, White is doing very well here. Mm -hmm. King H1 would be better on the other side for White. Okay. So King H1. King H1. And uh, now there is a check on Black. Mm -hmm. And now White has time to save everything. And yeah, this is big advantage for White. Now mm -hmm. there is also Queen B2 check. Mm -hmm. And yeah. This seems very difficult. So Rook G1 was the idea which we both missed during the game. Right. And um, yeah, it's not sort of a move I would say that comes very naturally because of course you're looking in the center of the board and you're looking at all of these tactics. But there's this quiet move Rook G1. It's just uh, which is a very strong move. For that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Still not easy. Maybe I would not go for Bishop E2 idea here. Maybe King H8. But yeah. Yeah, White has made improvement and he is the one controlling the G file now. Absolutely. And he can move the king and yeah, this is mm. good for White. Right. 
but okay or queen but, c2 uh, happened in the game after bishop b1 yes. so yes. queen c2 happened and now we were already getting in blitz time controls you know we have to okay. now <laughs> blitz out i also end up spending a lot of time in this mm -hmm. critical position and here queen at seven is a threat so mm -hmm. the thing is where is the mate so i decided to go for bishop e2 in this position we went for bishop e2 bishop e2 so queen e2 is not possible because of knight f4. Right. So white has to go all in now. Queen mm -hmm. at seven. Yeah, he has King basically okay. sacked a piece. There has to be some sort of a continuation where he either mates you or just gets some material back. So, yes, king f8. And bishop h4. So this was white's idea. And mm -hmm. now he's threatening queen h8 mate. Right. Okay, so this position, when you look at it, which move or how can you defend this position? Which move comes to your mind? So this seems like a very tough position. Like for example, in this position, Queen H8, White is just threatening me. Mm -hmm. So maybe you have to look for some forcing moves in the position. Uh, something mm -hmm. like a check, which uh, can drive the, let's say, White King a bit forward. So maybe a move like Bishop F1. Is a Bishop F1. But you know, this is a very nice position. Mm -hmm. And this can be like a study-like position. Mm -hmm. And go one move back here. And I would say that 99% players will play bishop f1 check, mm -hmm. followed by bishop d4, which also right. I did in the game. Mm -hmm. So grab the material and then go for bishop d4 and save right. the mate. But mm -hmm. you know that uh, when uh, analyzing this game, mm -hmm. bishop f1 is just equal. It's, it's, wow. it, it just goes equal. And if I play bishop d4 directly, that is winning for me. And this okay. is uh, very difficult for humans to find this move without taking the rook on f1 right. and um, so in this position you're saying that bishop d4 is the only move which can for black yeah this is the move oh. which will have an advantage mm -hmm. and the difference here is that um now if white tries for um you know moving the king and rook g1 these mm -hmm. ideas there is always bishop f3 check that is the main difference okay so Let's say white plays rook g1 in the position, something like that, or maybe some other move. Okay, um, rook g1, may, and now I have um, rook c1, I think. I have rook c1 right now. Rook c1 is there, and... Uh, oh, okay, this is fine. But uh, the main point here of the position, go back one move. You should default. Yeah, now king h1 is not so easy to play because you can take on c1 and bishop f3 check. And now since you have that bishop on e2, you have this check, right. which but would not you... be possible before. So in the game, right. I will show you now what happens, the difference. I took the bishop rook, mm -hmm. rook takes, mm -hmm. bishop d4. Mm -hmm. And now here white had a very strong move, king h1. Okay. King h1 in this position. Okay. Wow, that is definitely not a move which... I would expect or would be easy to <laughs> so play sort of. The very oh. big difference, uh, king h1. And now you see rook g1 is a very deadly threat. Mm -hmm. Rook g1 and rook g8 mate. Right. And it seems and, uh, very difficult to stop. Is there a way to stop it? Okay, there is. It's a very complex way to defend this position. I think there is knight f4 or knight g5 and oh. some crazy computer lines here. <laughs> but... In time pressure, this is not easy to defend. This is, I would say, almost position. impossible to find in time pressure. So, but yeah, with the bishop on e2, now you see the difference is that I would yeah. always have this check, bishop takes pawn. Right. And I would uh, save everything in the end. Absolutely. So bishop b4, wow. So yeah, it almost resembles a study, I would say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, everybody will take the material, of course. And I also mm -hmm. did that. Bishop f1 check. Mm. So here rook takes and now bishop d4. So we have extra material, don't mind giving some back. And yeah, white took on d4 first, but king h1 would be the perfect Best. continuation. And so queen d4. Queen d4. Mm -hmm. Bishop f2. And, uh, queen f6. Now I don't think the mate threats are there anymore. Now the yeah, mate threats are not there. I am an exchange up. Mm -hmm. But still not easy to play because as long as there is a pawn on h6, mm -hmm. there is always a threat of, you know, pushing and being a passed pawn. Absolutely. And the bishop pairs are also com 
a good compensation. Right. So even though white is down on exchange, these bishop pairs are very strong. And of course, there's the strong pawn on h6s. Yes. So here he played bishop f5. Mm -hmm. Rook c3. Rook c3. c3. Bishop, bishop g3. g3. And yeah, here very complex position. We are both mm -hmm. in time pressure playing under, you know, few minutes. Right. Bishop d6 is the threat right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, here you played knight d4. Yeah, knight d4. Bishop d6, queen d6. Queen h8. And yeah, white gets the material black. And when I played knight d4 in mm -hmm. this position, I saw uh, all this is happening. And uh, you know, just go back. Yeah, mm -hmm. here, uh, when I played knight d4, I saw that there is bishop d6 check, queen d6, queen h8 check, king e7. And then rookie one check, knight e6, queen c3. I calculated this even though I had only a few minutes. Wow. And I thought I'm winning this because rook g8 check. Mm -hmm. And this was my calculation, rook g8 check. Mm -hmm. And after white will go to king h1, I would go queen g3 and game over. Mm -hmm. This was my calculation. Mm -hmm. So the idea of knight d4 was all this. And now I'm threatening a lot of checkmates, queen g2, queen h4. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this is... Yeah, there's no way to stop all of them, basically. Yes, so this happened. And when I was playing this continuation, I thought, okay, I'm winning now, mm -hmm. you know? So it will be over soon. Right. But what happened is that bishop d6, this mm -hmm. happened. Queen takes, queen h8, king e7, rook e1, knight e6. <laughs> all thing happened. I was almost ready to complete the game. Rook mm -hmm. g8. Rook g8, check. And suddenly he played queen g7. Okay, and so in this, this position, move, I just, I missed this move entirely. Mm -hmm. And I was so shocked during the game because mm -hmm. I did not see this move at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, what to do after queen g7? So, okay. What's the problem if we simply take, okay, if we just take, then I guess mm -hmm. you cannot. Take knight it. is pinned, so you can't knight take with the knight. And if you try to stop the pawn with mm -hmm. move like queen b8, let's say, mm -hmm. later. Here okay. it's not possible because rook e6 check. Yeah, rook e6 is there. So if so, I take, mm -hmm. okay, I did take rook uh, capture g7, takes. And here if I try to play queen b8 or move like this, it mm -hmm. doesn't work because there is bishop at 7 next and the pawn right. promotes and white There's wins. No, yeah, white is just winning. Okay, so, um, big advantage, I would say. Yeah. yeah, in this case, winning. In this case, winning, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, here I found a way. So, yeah, queen g7, I was very shocked to see this yeah. move. So, takes, takes, mm -hmm. queen b4. In the game, I went queen b4. Mm -hmm. So, now my idea is that, okay, I will let him promote. Mm -hmm. And then I will take the rook and so, uh, try to like... play this end game because I still have two extra pawns. Right. And so yeah. I still have the advantage. Yeah, maybe, uh, of course, this is practically still playable for white till some mm -hmm. point because maybe white can give some checks. But of course, uh, you are the one who has the advantage because you're up to Yeah, so, okay, it will take a long time to mm -hmm. convert this queen and game, but mm -hmm. I would do it. So queen d4 was played and mm -hmm. I decided to just repeat once just to gain, you know, a minute on the clock. Mm -hmm. We and both did that. A very complicated position, of course. So repeating will, of course, gain a bit of time by increasing. Yes. Yeah, so, but at this point, it's like we both are playing for more. We don't want right. to repeat. Mm -hmm. So queen b5, rook moves again, queen b4. And now he takes rook e6. So okay. yeah, now he doesn't want to repeat. He also is playing for again. Yes, yes. We both are fighting here. So mm -hmm. f takes e6. And bishop e6. Actually, bishop at 7 was the correct continuation. Mm -hmm. And the, the likely result would be a draw here. So I would mm -hmm. give a check, queen d2 check. And after king h3, a move like queen f4 and let him promote. And this end game would become a draw, queen takes pawn. Okay, mm -hmm. I can play a bit. Uh, but um, for me, draw is not difficult because I can trade the last pawn right. and just try to trade the queens and 
okay, maybe I will play for more in this mm. case. But um, practically, this is a draw. Like, uh, uh, like a draw with correct play, you would say. Yeah, yeah. So evaluation would be equal here. So bishop at seven was um, the best, but he played bishop e6 mm -hmm. in the bishop game. E6. So now mm -hmm. queen d2 check. King h3. And this is a very nice position here now. Mm -hmm. And uh, once again, this position can be used as a tactical exercise. Black mm -hmm. to play and win here. So now white is threatening to promote. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, there is a very beautiful way for black to win. But the funny thing is that in this position, I almost made a blunder, you know? I almost played here queen at six. Uh, queen h6 in this Yes, point. I almost played this. My idea was that he will queen, I will take on e6 check, mm -hmm. and then takes everything. And pawn and game is winning with an extra pawn. Mm -hmm. And just push d pawn and it's win. This should be winning. Right. Yes, but uh, the thing is that after queen at six, uh, in the very end, I realized that oh no, we can promote to a knight with the uh, queen yeah. back. Okay, with correct play, I can still draw, but this would be a disaster. So right. and of course, not something which you are hoping for. You are hoping to push for a win, not uh, like yes, yes. Sort of and and then push. there, I am the one who is fighting for a draw after knight. Absolutely. So uh, the correct there is only one way to win this. Um, position with mm -hmm. the same exact same idea mm -hmm. and the point is to go to e1 queen e1 queen e1 wow. yes so, so this is the only way to win mm -hmm. and now the idea is that if you promote to a queen same mm -hmm. line queen e6 check and wins and if he does something else uh, if he plays a move like bishop d5 now i have queen h1 check and king g3, queen g1 check and wins the pawn. So it's also a win. Yeah, and that is completely lost. Yeah, so that is why queen e1 is the only move. But um, queen e2 or queen e3 doesn't work. Queen e2 or queen e3 doesn't work because now bishop d5. And I don't have any more checks. Right. So it is very important that you have your queen actually on the e1 square so that you can get access to the h1 square. Followed mm -hmm. by the G1 square so that you can. Yeah, okay. This, I have to say, not a very difficult tactics, but um, I had very less time on the clock. And mm -hmm. since I said I almost played queen at six, yeah. I was a bit scared to mm -hmm. um, play something else. And in the end, I just took on e6. I think so, when I took on e6, I had like two or three seconds on the clock. Oh, wow. I so just yeah, that, was, that, that must be a very tense moment. Yeah, e6. reflex. I just took e6. Yeah. And let him promote to yeah. a queen. Okay. Yes. And um, yeah, this is not so easy to win, but mm -hmm. I can play for a win because I have more activity and I will get one pawn here. So queen f8 check, king f5, queen g7 check, king d6. Now time to just find a way to activate the king and to mm -hmm. save from checks. Right, you have to save some from like the from, from any perpetual check ideas which white might have. Queen f eight. Oh, sorry. Queen yeah. f eight. So now I have to go for the pawns, and yeah, as you can see, it's a long game. Right. So and uh, also the queen and game also you are still uh, trying to push for a win even under time pressure opponent also. Uh, mm -hmm. I would say that opponent also is uh, thinking that he can draw the position. Yes, yes. So, queen h5. Queen h5 but more easier to play from black side with one extra Absolutely. pawn. So now queen e3, I think, or queen... Okay, queen d1. Okay. And uh, I'm getting one pawn back here. Mm -hmm. yeah. White uh, can't save both of them. Queen f5, so I get b3. Yeah. And now the idea here is that I want to slowly push one of the pawns mm -hmm. so to promote. And... Uh, you know, hide from the checks, all the checks. So would you say that like this position is uh, objectively winning for black or would you say that? Yeah, yeah, I would say this is winning, but mm -hmm. got to be very careful and it's right. going to be a long game. And since I have an extra pawn, every mm -hmm. queen trade is in my favor. Yeah, so, so it's, for, yeah, it's easier to play that. Way. Yeah, so for any check, I can block with the queen and it's mm -hmm. in my favor. Right. So queen c8 check, king d4. 
in g4. Now and here now, I decide to push the a pawn, not the d pawn, because um, outside pass pawn is much stronger. Absolutely. And here we played a four, a3, queen h8 check. Now he will try to give you various sort of checks. Yeah, here yeah. there are many, many checks. Right. Okay, maybe you can go faster mm -hmm. because uh, long game. But yeah. here I was confident I will find a way out of it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the game was very long. We were the last game in the tournament hall. I think it went for five right. and a half hours, six hours. And also this was round seven. So I guess it was a very important game for both of you as well. We both wanted mm -hmm. to, I guess in this position, he wanted to hold the draw at least save the half point while you wanted to go for a win. And yes, point. yes. So A2, so, Queen B6 check, C2, Queen F2, Queen E1 check, Queen B2, Queen F2. Okay, I have to say it wasn't easy. I was a bit nervous to get out of the checks. Mm -hmm. Um. But okay, the pawn is advanced pawn, and mm -hmm. uh, I would eventually find a way. Right. And time pressure works for me because mm -hmm. for white, even one wrong check will be game over. Right. Uh, yeah, that's true because you have sort of more options. You can always block with the queen, as you mentioned already. Mm -hmm. Queen f2 check, king b3, queen b6 check, king c2, queen f2 check. King b3. And in the end, I found a way to go to the other side. Okay. Mm -hmm. I. Now I was also the start, so I waiting guess. a bit for him to, you know, make a mistake. Mm -hmm. But he played well. He, so I had to find a correct way, go to the other side. Mm -hmm. And from and, this uh, side, yeah. I will run away now. And uh, in this position, we played Queen the one And now the pawn promotes. Yeah, now the pawn promotes and no more checks on Black King. So yeah, yeah so uh, you were in game, game basically, and uh, wow, this was a really nice victory. At some point, I guess uh, both of you had, uh, let's say, a bit more favorable circumstances, but it was your fighting spirit mm -hmm. which kept you going throughout the game. Yeah, yeah. So this, uh, I have to say, was like the crazy game mm -hmm. out of all the games I played because so much was happening mm -hmm. and it was so sharp and so rich in tactics right. that so... it made a very, very interesting game. And it's so, a little bit unfortunate that this was the only game which was not live transmitted, I guess. Right. So I guess they were having some problems in the transmission back in Abu Dhabi. So maybe yes. that's why uh, it happened. But this was a very nice game, I would say. And uh, the way you just kept persevering. And this, I think, was also a very rich game from training perspective because there are multiple mm -hmm. exercises which you can generate from this game. Yeah, yeah, that is true. Also, um, in this, it's like it was rich in all the parts of the game. First opening, mm -hmm. then middle game, end game. Nice tournament for you. And of course, now that you have got your uh, third WGM now, what is your live rating right now? Uh, my live rating is around 22, 30. So I still have a long way to go. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I, I want to plan my next tournament soon. Let's right. see. I think I will be playing the Indian Women National Championship next, okay. which is scheduled to be in November. Okay. So that can be my next tournament. And let's see, maybe some more tournaments coming up in December or the new year. Right. And that it will be my next goal, but not the end. Mm -hmm. And for now, I guess you will be focusing uh, on your pitch and of course your coaching program and of course in general preparing for the upcoming tournaments to come. Yes, yes. So um, I want to focus more on becoming a better player in general mm -hmm. and um uh, I see that, you know, uh, the more you work, the more uh, opportunities you can have. And uh, yeah, I want to, I'm doing it consistently for two years already in training and, you know, working out and everything. So uh, trying to keep a discipline and uh, yeah, I want to uh, go for 2300 and even more, even further from right. there onwards. And uh, would you say that uh, like things like, uh, for example, streaming what you do and also coaching. Uh, has this helped you sort of in becoming a stronger player? Or, uh, uh, yeah, how for is it me, for you? personally, it has helped, I would say, mm -hmm. because um, when I'm streaming, when I'm uh, working with students, my students are also very strong players themselves. Mm -hmm. So yes. I have to, you know, put in more work and prepare for it and um, 
yeah in general i have to be a stronger player myself first absolutely so in that case it has helped me and yeah mm -hmm. streaming as i said i like to have instructive streams mm -hmm. so it even motivates me to um, work more on myself right. so yeah so, it, it does help me yeah so when you're let's say preparing for an instructive stream you are also going through the same game on the same concept and it is also uh, helping you and your chess game yes yes definitely and yeah, yeah um, my students and also the viewers on my stream are also strong players mm -hmm. so uh, it's nice to have a great discussion and chess is a game where it can be very interesting to share it with someone you know and uh, I have this twitch community where we have a nice interactions and discussions and analysis and um, people suggesting ideas and it can be a great brainstorming as well so yeah we like to generate new ideas and mm -hmm. that can be very helpful right absolutely so uh Rucha, it has been a lovely chat with you and i personally also learned a lot from this interview uh mm -hmm. both of the games which you played were very instructive very rich in content and thank you for this interview and uh, thank you i wish you the best of luck for all of your upcoming tournaments Thank you. And it was nice to meet with you and to, to be a part of this interview.